A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison, who had once been disobedient, while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now, it is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, if Christmas trees and the jingle of silver bells marks Christmas, then I'd say that Lent is marked by McDonald's filet o fish advertisements and conversations about what people have given up for Lent. And I overheard just one such conversation yesterday. Two young women were in line behind me and they were talking and one told the other that she'd given up bread and cheese for Lent. Now this is kind of ironic because I was in line at the St. Louis Bread Company. But regardless, her friend asked, you know, how can you be doing something so extreme, so difficult? And she responded quite simply, well, that's the point. We're supposed to do something difficult. We're supposed to sacrifice. Put another way, we're supposed to suffer. And to the outside world, that's probably all Lent is about. A bunch of us deciding that we're going to suffer. As if the suffering we can't do anything about weren't enough. We go and choose to suffer more during Lent. Now why in the world would we do such a thing? Well, I'd say if we're suffering for the sake of suffering, then we're all crazy. We're probably a bunch of bachelors wearing white dresses. And that's it, nothing more. But I suspect that that's not really the case. So then why is it that we suffer? Well, the Christian tradition is rich in reasons why we choose to suffer. There's the notion of solidarity with those who can't choose to do otherwise. So that when we feel hungry on Ash Wednesday, we can remember those who go hungry throughout the world. Although, unlike them, we don't understand what it's like to not be able to feast the next day. We also suffer to empty ourselves of our dependence on things of the world to satisfy that internal longing so that we can acquire a taste for God rather than anything else we can imagine. Suffering is also a training grounds for temptation. The notion is, if I can't say no to a cookie, how am I going to say no to the devil? Now, all those are good, but I think St. Peter today has a reason for suffering that will strike particularly close to home for us as preachers. Now, we have the lectionary readings, which are slightly modified so that they make sense in and of themselves. So the first line originally says, rather than Christ suffered for sins once, Christ also suffered for sins once. Because Paul has just been, sorry, not Paul, Peter has finished telling the Christians that they need to be willing to suffer for the sake of the gospel. He's literally just said, it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. And now he provides them with a model. Jesus Christ suffered just like I am asking you to suffer, and you ought to follow his example. And what is his example? The righteous suffer for the sake of the unrighteous that he might lead you to God. Sounds like a preacher. Suffering for the sake of sinners to lead them to God. Now, if Christ is our model, and Christ gave everything for the gospel to the point of death, then I think the natural question for us is what are we willing to suffer for the gospel? You and I. Now, I know that among us we have a great deal of suffering accrued for the sake of the gospel. We've sacrificed careers, potential future families. Some of us have lost friends. We've sparked animosity with family members just to be here. Some of us 
have even sacrificed a finger for the sake of the gospel. And for all of that, I'm proud of you, brothers. And I thank you because that is a model for the world as well. But we might be tempted to say, well, I've given so much. What more could God possibly want from me? And the answer is very simple. Everything. So the question this Lent, and always, is where have I drawn the line? Where have I said, Lord, this far, but no further? What are we truly willing to suffer? Are we willing to suffer earthly failure? Ministries that never amount to anything in the eyes of the world. Are we willing to suffer God's silence in our prayers, Brother Raphael preached about last night? Can we suffer the humiliation of admitting that we're wrong and apologizing when we are? What about the earthly impracticality of spreading the gospel as poor preachers? Can we take on that suffering? Can we take on the suffering of being thought as weird because we strike up a conversation with everybody and anybody because we're so yearning for them to receive the gospel? Are we willing to learn another language or minister in a culture unlike our own, even within our own country? Are we willing to have our intentions misconstrued for the rest of our lives being judged for things we never did? Are we willing to sacrifice our own personal plans as religious for the plans of our community? Are we willing to speak out for the sake of truth and justice, even if it means alienating ourselves from those we love or undergoing persecution? Now here I have a small confession to make, maybe a rather large one. I'm often ashamed of how bold and courageous I can be up here in the safety of these walls of this chapel, and how much of a coward I can be out there. Let me give you an example. Just about a week ago, I was riding the bus, and the bus driver decided to squeeze himself in into the lane that a semi-truck was riding the line of. Sure enough, he hit the semi-truck's mirror, the two pulled over, and the furious bus driver comes over and starts banging on the window. He rolls down the window, and the bus driver said, or the truck driver says, you broke my mirror. Buster says, well, you were in my lane. I'm thinking to myself, what are you talking about? You squeeze yourself in there, you hit him. Now, on top of that, this poor truck driver had this thick Eastern European accent. So the bus driver starts making fun of that as well. And I, in my gym clothes, incognito, just sit back and say absolutely nothing. Nothing. As I'm witnessing this injustice. Small, but injustice nonetheless. So what was I afraid of? Was I afraid of being kicked off the bus? Was I afraid that this bus driver would never pick me up again or just speed by as he saw me running to try and catch the bus? I've given everything away, in theory, to be a Dominican. But here I am, worried about something so minute. And I think that's the sad irony, brothers. We've given everything away, but we worry about the small stuff. We find ourselves unable to suffer in the small ways, and we're ultimately afraid. But what do we have to be afraid of? God is on our side. We've given everything into his hands, and he's promised to walk with us along the way. So maybe when the suffering that's before us seems greater than our ability, and we think we're entirely incapable of facing it, we can remember a quote that's resonated with me from Of Gods and Men. And there are these Trappist monks who are facing persecution and quite probably death speak about their own struggles with giving their lives away. And one of the monks who's struggling with his faith talks with a prior. And the prior tells him as he's facing this reality of death and finds himself unable to do it. He says, remember, you've already given your life. You gave it by following Christ when you decided to leave everything. When we realize that our lives already belong to Christ, then we can learn to hold nothing back, to suffer everything. And since we know then that Christ is suffering with us, and that as we suffer we draw the world to him, then not only will we be willing to suffer everything, but we will find joy even in our suffering.